Hi class, today we're talking about New Hollywood. This would be the late 60s through the 80s. A recession in Hollywood in the 50s and 60s. Studio monopolies were broken up. This was the famous court case, United States versus Paramount Pictures. It was an antitrust case that broke up studio control over movie production, distribution, and exhibition. And then TV cut into the profits of studios. Uh, there was a dwindling audience during the 50s and 60s. Hollywood film was often dry, toned down, and more or less safe. Think of things like Rebel, uh, My Fair La Lady. Uh, despite some success by a big budget film, Hollywood was losing money. And in many ways, the creativity grew stagnant. So you had competition with TV and other outlets. Uh, so you had things like uh, drive-in movie theaters, uh, 3D, smell vision, and so suddenly event movies, uh, they were the most effective. These films were disaster films, and they're kind of a, a precursor to the, to the superhero films. Uh, they had large budgets, they had big-named big actors, um, and special effects. So it's again, kind of like the, the superhero films. So this is the trailer for <coughs> Airport, which was made for $45 million, er, made $45 million. Back in that time was a lot, and nominated for 10 Oscars. And this trailer is kind of interesting because it tells you everything that's in the film. You know, you don't even really have to watch it after that point. We'll just watch it a minute, you'll get the idea. The year's most widely read novel becomes today's most exciting, most highly motion picture. Airport, big scale in every way, has the biggest all-star cast ever assembled for a single universal motion picture. Burt Lancaster, Dean Martin, Gene Seaburn, Jacqueline Bissett, George Kennedy, Helen Hayes, Van Heflin, Maureen Stapleton, Barry Nelson, Lloyd Nolan, Donna Winter. pilot from York Flight 45 made a shortcut across the field, and he didn't make it. But what are you doing about it? Well, when the snow melts in April, we'll get it out. What the hell do you think I'm doing about it? Outselling any novel of recent years, translated into 14 languages, Arthur Haley's Airport was written for the screen and directed by Academy Award winner George Seaton. It has seven stories tied into one. Dean Martin is pilot Vernon Demarest. Loved by stewardess Jacqueline Bissett and by his wife, Barbara Hale. You're sure? Do you mean am I sure I'm pregnant? Or am I sure you're the father? Bert Lancaster is airport manager Mel Bakersfeld at the crisis stage with his socialite wife, Donna Winter. I think you get the idea. Another big one, uh, Poseidon Adventure. This is remade a few years ago. Uh, this actually does still hold up. Basically, this cruise ship hits a wave and gets turned upside down, and the passengers have to make their way up uh, from the uh, through the ship in order to survive. Still an entertaining film. Again, we'll just watch a little bit of the trailer. Again, 
again, in some ways, the precursor to the to the um, superhero film, and that there are big budget films with big named actors that focused on these sort of huge events. Then you kind of had a renaissance in the '70s, uh, where the directors kind of took over. Um, New Hollywood's appeal is a combination of appealing to the youth, counterculture such as Easy Rider, added realism. This is, too, you're going to see a big effect with the French New Wave in terms of the acting with films like Bonnie and Clyde and Easy Rider. Uh, how did I do this? There's a breakdown of the production code. 1966 was the end of the content and subject limited production mode. European film style and content began to influence changes to like the French New Wave. Content became edgy, edgier, nude, nudity and violence became acceptable. So this is the death scene from uh, Bonnie and Clyde, and as you watch this, um, when the pigeons come out, when the shots are fired, you're gonna see some jump cuts happening. So again, a direct example of the influence of the French New Wave. <laughs> Bonnie and Clyde, famous American bandits who ended up being killed by the police. So watch when the f shots are fired. Watch what the jump cuts that occur. Hey, didn't that map come there? So you can see the influence of uh, the French New Wave. And the, the 70s really, that was the era where the dir directors had their greatest power. Uh, who are some of these filmmakers? Uh, big names were Francis Ford Coppola, Woody Allen, Robert Altman, Mike Nichols, Arthur Penn, Dustin Hoffman, Hal Ashby. Hal Ashby made a lot of the films that I thought were some of the best films I've ever seen, such as The Last Detail. Dennis Hopper, Warren Beatty, Peter Bogdanovich. Um, so this is a clip from um, Apocalypse Now, which some critics say this is the best scene ever made. This is basically a take on uh, Joseph Conrad's uh, Heart of Darkness. But instead of going into Africa, it's set in Vietnam, where um, a group of um, army men are sent in to reign in a rogue colonel who has sort of made himself a god amongst the local tribes and they kind of go in to try to assassinate him. This is earlier on in the film when they have to land a boat and they end up getting into a battle with a village. The, the logistics of this scene are so impressive because these aren't special effects. This is the real deal in terms of the explosions going off. I can't get used to him. He's a heavy boy. I know. It's a real fast. You use, you prefer a heavy or a light boy. Heavier. Really? Yeah. A light boy. Yeah. Well, 
So a big filmmaker in the 70s. This is from a film called Annie Hall, which won the Oscar over Star Wars. Two elderly women are at a Catskill Mountain resort, <clears throat> and one of them says, boy, the food at this place is really terrible. The other one says, yeah, I know, and such small portions. Well, that's essentially how I feel about life, full of loneliness and misery and suffering and unhappiness, and it's all over much too quickly. The, the other important joke for me is one that's uh, usually attributed to Groucho Marx, but I think it appears originally in Freud's wit and its relation to the unconscious. And it goes like this, I'm paraphrasing. Um, I would never want to belong to any club that would have someone like me for a member. That's the key joke of my adult life in terms of my relationships with women. You know, lately the strangest things have been going through my mind because I turned 40 
and I guess I'm going through a life crisis or something. I don't know. I, I and I'm not worried about aging. I'm not one of those characters, you know. I, although I'm balding slightly on top, that's about the worst you can say about me. I um, I think I'm going to get better as I get older. You know, I think I'm going to be the the balding virile type. You know, as opposed to say the um, distinguished gray, for instance. You know, unless I'm neither of those two. Unless I'm one of those guys with saliva dribbling out of his mouth who wanders into a cafeteria with a shopping bag screaming about socialism. <sighs> Annie and I broke up, and I, I still can't get my mind around that. You know, I, I keep sifting the pieces of the relationship through my mind and, and examining my life and trying to figure out where did the screw-up come, you know? And a year ago we were in love, you know? And, 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 I just, and it's funny, I'm not, a, I'm not a morose type. I'm not a depressive character. I, 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 uh, you know, I was a reasonably happy kid, I guess. I was brought up in Brooklyn during World War II. So that golden era kind of ended with Jaws. Uh, 1975 generally considered the first of the blockbuster era. Uh, before Jaws, actually, not a lot of people went to the film to the movies in the summer, and Jaws was kind of the first film that made summer movies sort of a big deal. Uh, before it was released, the studio spent millions hyping the film in advertisement. Instead of opening in select cities, followed by a slow rollout, which was a common release, it opened wide on over 400 screens. Made seven million opening weekend. And eventually, made over two hundred, which by those um, the seventy standards would have been a huge number. So Jaws kind of ended that sort of really nice period of the seventies where the director sort of had all the control, and this is kind of taking us towards the eighties and what eighties movies became. We'll just watch a little bit of the trailer for Jaws. Alive today. Who has survived millions of years. Of Most of you probably have seen this. Without change. Without passion. If you haven't, you should. Logic, it lives to kill. A mindless eating machine. It will attack and devour anything. It is as if God created the devil and gave him jaws. <laughs> this is Universal's extraordinary motion picture version of Peter Benchley's best-selling novel, Jaws. I just found out that the girl got killed here last week. You knew it. You knew there was a shark out there. <laughs> you knew it was dangerous. But you were swimming anyway. So, the director era more or less ended with that. The movie brats, who were they? Uh, they were a combination of influences, a generation of filmmakers who immersed themselves in both American and international cinema. They watched films on TV, they went to film schools, they studied world experimental and Hollywood cinema, they had encyclopedic knowledge of film, they were movie buffs, who were they? Martin Scorsese, John Carpenter, Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, and uh, this, this is the trailer for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, and what's interesting about this is that the film critic Pauline Kael, when she saw this in her review, she said, basically, this is like the fantasy of a 14-year-old boy. But she said there is a danger in the, in this type of film and that one day I could see that this is all there is for film, is films like this. And when you look at Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, just as you watch the trailer, think to yourself, it, this does kind of look like the first of the superhero movies. And so she was kind of right about that, about where cinema was headed. Again, that was Pauline Kael. So this is kind of a combination between George Lucas and uh, Steven Spielberg. Nearly 
3,000 years, man has searched for the lost Ark of the Covenant. The Bible speaks of the Ark leveling mountains and laying waste to entire regions. That's something to be taken lightly. No one knows its secrets. Jones, do you realize what the Ark is? It's a transmitter. It's a radio for speaking to God. An army which carries the Ark before it is invincible. The Ark, it is their Atanis. Then it is something that man was not meant to disturb. It is protected by forces beyond imagination. It is desired above all treasures on Earth by those who are good, trust me, and those who are evil. I tell you everything. Yes, I know you will. Raiders of the Lost Ark. There you go. So that could be a trailer for a superhero film you saw today. Uh, eventually, and then in, of course in 2008 we had uh, uh, Iron Man came out and from then on it's pretty much just been superhero movies that have dominated the cinema. So that takes us through, uh, through cinema history then. If you have any other questions feel free to email me.